Becoming a better writer is a bit of an arduous process, laboring for years over manuscripts in a dark room, hoping that today is the day you finally get the words in the right order. Normally on this channel I try to help you through this process, which often takes a lifetime, but not today. No, today I'm going to give you three quick writing fixes that will take you from mediocre to slightly better than mediocre. None of these are miracle fixes, but they will help. Tip number one, focus on verbs. Stories are fundamentally about stuff happening, and the words that make stuff happen are verbs. That's a direct quote from either Hemingway or Steinbeck, I can't remember. Sentences have three fundamental parts. There's the subject, which is the person or thing doing the thing. There's the verb, which is the thing being done, and the object, which is the thing the verb is being done to. As a writer, you don't have a ton of control over the subject. You're usually either stuck with the character's name, or a pronoun, or the name of the object that's the subject of the sentence. Same thing with the object. It's usually either a name of a noun or a pronoun. Where real control and potential lies is in the verb. Here you have almost unlimited possibilities that you, the writer, can transmute into your sentence. Fred threw the diamonds, Fred lobbed the diamonds, Fred hucked the diamonds, Fred tossed the diamonds, Fred biffed the diamonds. Those sentences all sound different and likely convey a slightly different image in your mind because they use different verbs, even though the action being described is basically the same. This is where you can really paint a picture for the reader. Your verb choice is one of the most important decisions you'll have to make as a writer. So if a passage or sentence feels flat, consider changing the verb. Next up, still on the subject of verbs, try removing any ing verbs. That's verbs ending in ing. There's nothing wrong with ing verbs, but getting rid of them can be helpful in certain situations. ing verbs tend to sound more passive, the word itself is longer, and swapping them out I find at least can make a sentence a little bit more dynamic. Fred took a step forward, tossing the diamonds to his accomplice. That's an okay sentence. Fred stepped forward and tossed the diamonds to his accomplice. That's also an okay sentence, perhaps a little bit better. It feels a bit more immediate and a bit more active to me. This is totally just my opinion, but I find that ing verbs tend to slow the action down. They make the sentences, as I said, a little bit more passive, so swapping them out can be a good idea. Improvement number three, don't bury your dialogue. There is, to my knowledge at least, no rule stating that a line of dialogue needs to start on a new paragraph assuming the beginning of the paragraph started with some narrative that wasn't dialogue. Yes, when a new character speaks, that needs to be a new paragraph. That's not what I'm talking about. When you switch characters, you need a new paragraph. But if you start a paragraph with something non-dialogue-y, you can have a sentence in the middle of that paragraph become dialogue. You can, but I don't know necessarily that you should. For me, personally, I find that dialogue is better when it's brought out as a start of its own paragraph. The major exception to this is if the first part of the paragraph is something like an action beat or something preceding that's very relevant to the dialogue, then it makes sense to include it in the paragraph. Otherwise, I would say move it to its own paragraph. Improvement number four, get rid of adverbs. This is easy. Go through your manuscript and angrily delete any of the adverbs that you stupidly added in as you were dutifully drafting the manuscript you spent so much time vividly imagining. I know that getting rid of adverbs is like generic YouTube writing advice, and I usually try to offer you something better for your time, but it is still true. And if there's anyone out there who hasn't heard about this yet, then this is just another reminder. Usually adverbs are a sign of weak writing, getting rid of them and replacing them with more active, more descriptive, more evocative language is usually going to help your writing. And finally, improvement number five, get rid of some of your dialogue tags or replace them with action beats. The general consensus, I think, is that you should be using said as your main dialogue tag. That's pretty common advice. But did you know that you don't need a tag after every line of dialogue? I'm not sure who said that. He, she, they, said only needs to follow when the character who's speaking needs to be identified. If you have an exchange happening between two characters and in the first two parts of the exchange you've identified who's speaking, technically every subsequent exchange 
doesn't need a dialogue tag because the reader can just assume that once one character finishes speaking, the other character speaks, and then after that, the first character speaks again. So that each subsequent line of dialogue is spoken by the opposite character. There are different rules of thumb you'll hear out there about how many exchanges you should go before you add in a dialogue tag. Some people say three exchanges, some people say more, no more than five. I think the correct answer is that whenever the reader gets confused about who's speaking, that's when you need a dialogue tag. Removing dialogue tags makes the dialogue seem a little bit more quippy, it makes it move a little bit faster. This is great for writing like banter or things like an interrogation scene where there's like very rapid question answer, question answer sort of thing. You can also replace some of your dialogue tags with action beats, which are basically actions that the speaker performs either while they're speaking or immediately after. Here, take these diamonds. Fred produced a small canvas sack from his pocket and hucked it towards me. In that line, since Fred is the subject of the action beat, we can assume that Fred was the one who spoke the line of preceding dialogue. It's a perfectly acceptable way to identify who's speaking. Action beats are also a great way to avoid the dreaded white room syndrome, where you have an extensive dialogue exchange between multiple characters, where nothing really happens in between the lines of dialogue, such that the dialogue might as well be happening in a white room. Action beats are also a great way to deliver subtext to your dialogue, which is meaning or thoughts that the characters have that aren't necessarily conveyed through the words of the dialogue. Just like I'm hoping this video was a good way to convey this infer the content of the video to you. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.